Hi everyone, welcome to my very first uh, virtual art session with Independent Arts on Independent Arts' YouTube channel. Uh, welcome to my garden. <laughs> I thought I'd start today's video off in my garden because it's so beautiful today. Uh, the birds are singing, I hope you can hear them. It's absolutely it's like being in an aviary around here at the moment. It's lovely. Um, super proud of my garden. <laughs> got all sorts of vegetables growing now. See, I've got some... Um, Big yellow courgette there, uh, some giant sunflowers there, broad beans at the back, a load of peas, an abundance of carrots, spring onions, all sorts. Um, loving the garden life at the moment and it's inspired me for today's art project as well. If you look over this side I've got some beautiful sweet peas that are out in bloom, they smell gorgeous. So what I thought we'd do today is um, a bit of a nature inspired art piece taking inspiration from these beautiful sweet peas that I've got growing here. Oh, if only you could smell through the television. They smell absolutely divine. Uh, so what we're going to do is a little something, a little bit like this. Some sweet pea art using some interesting household utensils. No paintbrushes allowed today. So here we go. For today's art project, we're only going to need three things. First thing we're going to need is something to paint on. Today, I've just got some plain white paper. It's, uh, it's quite smooth, it's quite thick, a bit thicker than normal printer paper. But if that's all you've got, just some plain A4 paper or a canvas, board or card. This technique will work on a number of surfaces and it's always fun to experiment. The next thing we're going to need, something that everybody's got at home, we're going to need a set of cutlery, a knife, a fork and a spoon. That's what's great about this art project is that there's no need for any fancy artists brushes or specialist equipment and uh, we, can, we can make a really beautiful picture with some things that everybody's got in a drawer in the kitchen. Next up, what we need next, um, the last thing we'll on the list is um, some paint. And again, we don't need any special sort of paint in particular. I've got a mixture today. I've got a few tubes of acrylic paint and I've also got some tubes of watercolour. But if you've only got poster paint, this technique works just as well with that. I've got quite a limited palette today as well. I'm only going to be using um, some sort of light green, some light green, some purple, some blue, red, and if we want to chuck in a little bit of pink, yellow, I think that'll just about do. Before we start on our main piece, it's always a good idea and always good fun to have a little bit of a practice first. So let's have a practice sheet. This technique relies a lot on, well, it's just um, dragging the paint across the surface using different, in, different implements and creating different effects. So, for example, I'm going to start off showing you a few things that we can do with our knife. I've put a couple of splodges of the light green paint. Um, the paint that I've got today is uh, light green acrylic but as I said earlier if you've only got poster paint, if you've got poster paint or uh, a tube of watercolour, oils even, experiment, whatever paint you've got give it a go. So I've done a couple of splodges here of light green. I'm gonna have a little practice now with the knife. Holding it, imagine a bit like you're spreading butter or jam really and I'm going to spread it and drag the paint across up the page, like, like so. And you'll see this nice effect of light and dark that you get where you're spreading the paint thinner in some areas. And it looks to me a little bit like grass or leaves. You can experiment holding the knife flatter for thicker lines or more up on the end for a thinner, for a thinner streak. And this is a wonderful technique to do leaves or grass. If you go from the bottom up to the top as well to do the leaves, it will naturally fade away towards the top end and be stronger and thicker at the bottom. Like a blade of grass or a leaf. So there we go, have a little practice. 
let's try instead of using the, the flat side and spreading we could try and use the thin edge of the knife or the back of the knife and push push up like this now depending on what surface you're painting on as well the paint will spread easier or different depending on um, the different types of paper or paint that you're actually using today that's why it's a good idea to have have a bit of a practice first if you're painting on a rough surface like a um, like a canvas or a textured board you may find it easier as well to give it a little coat of white paint first you could do a mixture of white acrylic and PVA um, and that just helps reduce the friction on your surface and will make it easier to push the paint around like we want to do so here I've just done a little layer of a, of a white paint just to show you how the paint's gonna push around on that smoother surface there you go so if you do that you can you can use the uh, the finer edge of the knife and push your paint up like so to make a much thinner stem stalk or grass effect if you want some shorter blades of grass as well just um, some quick movements have a practice have fun It's abstract, it's art, it's all about having fun and getting messy at the end of the day. And uh, if we make something pretty while we're at it, all the better. The next bit of cutlery we're gonna need is our fork. I've been feeling particularly inspired <laughs> lately by um, by the beautiful sweet peas that are growing in my garden. I planted them from seed. Uh, they're in full bloom now, smelling beautiful in my garden and my house. As I keep having to cut them and bring them inside, um, and I absolutely love them. I love their little uh, the way that they grab onto the trellis with their little tendrils. Um, so that is what we're going to be using the fork for today. Um, again have a bit of a practice on a spare bit of paper before you commit to your final art piece but if we put a blob of paint again using the four prongs of the fork to push the paint along we can just experiment with some lovely curly tendrils if that's the right word you can use just one one prong of the fork on its own make a more detailed line all four to make it all a bit wilder okay that's without any white paint on the surface first let's have a go at that um, let's try like I said you may find it easier and what I'm probably going to do for the final piece is do a little layer of white paint first just to help that paint push around on the wet surface you may also like to experiment with putting the paint directly onto your cutlery instead of onto the paper first and that's what this part of the video is all about having a practice I never know quite what's going to happen when I start doing a piece of artwork so we can get lines like this some thinner ones or again putting the paint onto the paper first and pushing dragging gently moving the paint around I think my favorite thing about this technique is where you're starting from a central point of the stem or down the bottom where the roots are and you're pushing the paint slowly deliberately sort of where it's where it wants to go really the path of least resistance it feels very organic and very much like um, <laughs> like a plant growing at the same time you can kind of get that um, that feeling yourself of growth and extension there we go if you have a, um, a flat 
surface of paint as well, you may be able to use the fork to draw, draw lines in it. So for example, if you had a leaf, put detail in front. Experiment with the different techniques you can use for the fork. I think out of all the cutlery, uh, <laughs> all the cutlery that we're using, I think I enjoy working with the uh, the fork the most. Just the um, the fun effects that you can make with it. Not limited to just plant life either. I've, uh, I've used um, used fork before to make some wonderful feather effects, feather or fire. There's all sorts of different effects that we can use in our paintings. Okay, if we started with a central point and work out, going up in one direction, we can sort of get a bit of a, a feather effect or a, some sort of fern leaf. Possibilities are endless. <laughs> In fact, I've just been inspired by this bit. I know it wasn't originally in my plan and certainly not in my original colour palette, but having a little bit of a play now <laughs> with a bit of brown paint. I'm thinking that this effect with the fork might make a wonderful sort of gnarled old trunk, tree trunk or something. There we go. some paint around start off you can start off with a with a new little blob of paint for every um, stem leaf appendage branch possibly as well as making some great um, feather leaf fire effects also it seems the fork's pretty good for doing um, some bark effects as well that you may want to add into your painting you can have a little bit of a swirl here for a knot in the trunk using all four prongs or three prongs of, of your fork for the um, for the trunk And then using just a single one as we get out to the thinner branches. Great fun. <laughs> and last but not least, we'll have a little play about with our remaining piece of cutlery, the spoon. Now, I thought about the spoon uh, for the petals, possibly. If we're going to go for some sweet peas today, I thought we could use the back of the spoon as a nice rounded um, surface to print with. So hopefully we're going to be able to make some quite uniform shaped petals. Uh, not all identical, but certainly a nice uniform round shape. Let's have a little experiment with a few different colours. My sweet peas in my garden at the moment are absolutely beautiful. Um, they're a really deep uh, deep burgundy red that, uh, that I haven't actually seen I they certainly weren't wasn't pictured on the packet <laughs> so uh, I've been very pleased with those so let's try a few different colors for our petals and in a minute we may be feeling confident enough to start our final piece I've got some pink some red some purple and some blue Of course, you can have different size spoons as well. I just got the full cutlery set of the knife, fork, and spoon, but we could use um, you could use a teaspoon as well for some smaller petals. Right, and what we're going to try and do is just again pushing the paint around the paper using the cutlery and try and make a give it a, a bit of a roll, a bit of a rolling 
motion there. Take it away and see what we've got. Well, that's one petal. What you could do, little sweet peas, you can yeah, pop a couple of a couple of extra prints around like that. And again, like with the knife, naturally you're going to get more paint in some areas than others, which makes a wonderful effect, light and dark. So you're welcome to uh, give your cutlery a, a clean. I've just got some baby wipes here. It's the easiest way to clean your implements on the go. And we've got some petals like that. What else could we use the, uh, the spoon for while we're here? Have an experiment. Have a play. <laughs> we could use the rounded front edge for some more abstract effects. What you could do, you could put a blob of paint on the palette first, get a little bit on the back of your spoon and then print. See what happens if you give a little bit of a circular motion? What happens if you give it a wipe? happens if you just roll it from one side to the other. Oh, I like that effect. That could be my favourite. There you go. Feel free to fill up a whole sheet of practising. And I think we're nearly ready to go for our final piece. Right, now we've had a practice, I think we're ready to start on our final piece of art. Just a quick recap of what we need. Something to paint on, I've just got some plain paper. If you want to use a canvas or board or card or just any sort of paper, it's fine. If you've got a, um, a bit of a rougher surface like canvas or something, you may want to put a little layer of white paint or white acrylic and PVA on first to paint on wet, just to make that surface a bit smoother for you. Um, and easier to push the paint around with our cutlery. Right, we also need something to paint with. Our knife and fork and spoon. And some paint. For this final piece, uh, I think I'm just going to use three colours. I'm going to go for the light green, a nice purple and a deep red. And I think that's going to suffice. Right, starting off with the green. I'm going to start off with the light green and our knife. Like we did right at the start to make our stems and stalks and leaves. So, just a couple of blobs to start with. A couple of blobs of green down the bottom of our page. And remember, we can use the thinner side of the knife, thinner edge, either of the edges, either of the sides, to do a, a thinner stalk. Or for a thicker leaf, think of it more like spreading a bit of jam on a piece of toast and use the flat side of your knife. So we're going to take this blob of paint with the knife and gently push up. faster the motion, the straighter the line, generally. You can 
also use the side of the knife and wipe to make some little leaves. I don't think we've got quite enough stalks there, so what I'm going to do is up some of these larger ones. Here and there, I'm going to put a few more little blobs of green paint. And strike them up with the knife like this. next bit of cutlery we're going to need for the little tendrils of the sweet peas so they can hang onto the trellis climb up climb up the wall etc I'm going to use the fork for that Remember, you can use just one prong of the fork to do a very much more detailed line. So you can put the paint on the edge of the fork or make a little blob to, to go off on the paper. You can use all four at the same time for a bit more of a, a wild effect some of these lovely little curly tendrils going and into a little ringlet And there we have it, there we have some, we're done with the green. Okay, now onto the petals. Remember for our petals, we're gonna need our spoon. And what we can do, you can either pop your paint onto a palette first and print from that, or you can go around like we did with the green, a few strategically placed small blobs of beautiful color. We'll have some purple there, a few blobs of purple. And we're going to put some nice deep red in there as well. Once we've got our blobs of paint, we can get our spoon and using the back of our spoon, press down, give the little, little roll about and lift off. Make some beautiful petals keep going with that. Give our spoon a quick wipe. Let's get some of these beautiful red blooms out as well. Remember some might not be out in bloom yet, we might have some little buds waiting to bloom as well and for that we can use this is the rounded top end of the spoon on our little dab of paint and just give a little, just pull it forward slightly to make a little, just a little bloom that's not yet opened, ready to open soon. And that's pretty much it. All you can do, don't you don't have to stop there. You can add a few bits in using our cutlery we could add a few little round leaves 
I've forgotten a few little extra leaves. Again, using using the back of the spoon, you might want to change your spoon and use a, a different shaped, smaller teaspoon or something if you like. Again, it's all about experimenting, having fun and making art with things that you didn't know you could make art with. So some leaves through there. strategically placed leaves a little bit a few more dots of the green paint to do these lovely little curly appendages for the sweet peas and rounds some little loops like some little pig's tails little ringlets Pushing that paint. Let's make a beautiful summer sweet pea picture. can always go one step further and keep on adding detail if you like there's all sorts of different things that you can do with the knife and fork something that I find the fork really good for if you get a little a little bit of yellow paint or something a little bit of or a different shade of green onto your fork you can just add a few little little dots of yellow a bit of pollen or a little bit of shading detail on our stalks. To finish off just a few little extra bits of green at the bottom. A few more stalks coming out just to finish it off. And there we have it. Something very simple and easy that everyone can do with something that everybody's got. Thank you for joining me today. Now all that's left to do is sign your artwork, let it dry and hang it in pride of place. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope to bring you some more music, art, um, all sorts of different videos soon um, with the wonderful independent arts. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Bye.